Job 32, Elihu here. Hey, I've got a response to, to make. I had somebody respond to me about, uh, you know, all these mandates. Hey, aren't we supposed to obey, you know, the, every authority as a Christian? Um, no. The answer is no. <laughs> and I want to tell you why. Um, but at first, I want to justify why they're saying that. I want to read from you uh, Romans chapter 13 where it talks about this, so you have the context. Here it says, you know, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, but the powers that be are ordained of God. Agree with that 100%. Of course, everything in God's word I'm going to agree with. What we define as ordained of God and the higher powers is not just somebody elected to office. The highest law of the land in the United States is the Constitution, and some people forget that. We might as well have a funeral for it. But yeah, let's have a funeral for the Constitution because we've crapped all over it so many times, and people that have taken an oath to stand for it and defend it have just laid over. We've just let other people crap all over it, use it for toilet paper, and drive on. People don't give a rip about the Constitution. That's what's ordained of God. And if you have any sense as a Christian, you ought to stand up for it as well. Let me continue reading on. Romans 13, verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to them damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then be, not, be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For this cause, pay ye tribute also, pay your taxes, right? Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Now, a few comments on that for clarification, and I'm going to wrap this short video up. Look, the highest law of the land, again, is the Constitution, not the elected officials. They are there to represent you. They are not rulers. In our constitutional republic, you, the citizenship, are the rulers. We rule this land, and it is... It is very important that we send people to Congress that represent us. And when they don't, we rule and tell them they are done. The people are the rulers in this Constitution. Not only that, but I want to bring this to your attention too. Um, sh should we fear those in power? I mean, traditionally, yes. You should respect those in authority. Look, when I go to work... The, the boss is the boss. You know, I respect his authority. I do what he asks, and he respects me, and we get the job done together, and we go home. Look, this is about obeying authority that is godly. What if that godly authority asks you to do something that is ungodly? It's no longer obeyable at that moment. You have a conscience to keep to God, not to that ruler. And so when that authority that you call authority, that you think is the authority, whether it is or not, asks you to get the mark of the beast. Well, if you want to use that argument that you're supposed to obey all authority, then you're going to say that, well, I guess God wants me to get the mark of the beast. So I'm going to go get the mark of the beast because those in authority asked me to. And the Bible says that uh, I should obey all authorities because they're ordained of God. Nope. Please don't get the mark of the beast. In fact, the Bible says anyone who gets the mark of the beast is going to be condemned. You will go to hell. Read Revelation. It's all there. Look up the mark of the beast. The number of the beast is 666. It's also the number of a man. It is a coding system. And there are lots of coding systems. In fact, I've in over the last five years, I've heard of places throughout the world that this has been implemented already in its testing phase, in its rollout phase. But it is not rolled out worldwide in a unified system yet. It is, it is in little systems. I'm going to wrap this up to say 
No, you should not obey every person in authority. Not everybody in authority is ordained of God. And the highest law of the land in this country, the United States, is, besides the Bible and God, is the Constitution. And if it wasn't for the Bible and God, we wouldn't have that Constitution that I believe was ordained of God to the restraining of evil. That's why we have the separation of evils. I mean, the separation of powers, right? To restrain human evil. Because if you have two centralized power in one place, human evil takes it over. And, and that's just the nature of the beast. Our founding fathers knew that. And so they created this separation of powers to restrain human evil. We need that. We need to get back to our roots as far as the Word of God is concerned. We need to understand that the highest law of the land after the Bible is the Constitution. Don't use it for toilet paper. That is the ordained, and you need to obey it. You need to use it. You need to listen to it, and you need to, to um, proclaim it. That is the highest law of the land. And when we violate it, we need to prosecute people. We need to defend it. All those people out there, veterans that have taken a charge to defend the Constitution. What are we doing? Ought we have a funeral for our nation? Seems to me we should. What do you think?